I've been freezing to death all morning until now. And I'm, I'm warmed up now. And we're going to heat this place up a little bit. Uh, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is a little bit different than what I... I'm usually a little bit more laid back, I think, than some of the stuff and uh, might be a little more hard-hitting today than usual. So uh, here we go. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, and this is from Revelations 21, 3 through 7. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away their tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I was sitting back there in the middle of the church one Sunday in, kind of in the same spot that I, I usually sit in, right next to Marla, and someone was preaching. I don't remember who it was, and I apologize to them. But... Um, I was getting sleepy, and I thought I could take myself a little nap, and uh, I thought I could get away with it because, uh, well, it just it, I thought I could get away from it because I, I thought in my mind that nobody could see me from up front here, and uh, it was just so happened that the same day I brought in uh, what I call my driving glasses. These are these glasses here that I drive with so I can see uh, road signs and stuff. And I put them on, and uh, I couldn't believe how clear everybody's faces were. <laughs> and uh, I hadn't done that before. And uh, I guess my vision had gradually diminished to the point that I could, couldn't uh, make out the details or features of people up front, and I assumed it was the same for them looking back at me. And uh, you see, because my vision had become really dim, I could not and did not see what I really needed to see. I had fooled myself into thinking it was okay to sleep when it was really time to be paying attention. I think at times we have fooled ourselves into being or into believing that we are the way we are right now is good enough. Genesis uh, six twenty seven says, and he heard a voice from heaven saying, Enoch, my son, prophesy unto uh, this people and say unto them, repent. For thus saith the Lord, I am angry with this people, and my fierce anger is kindled against them. For their hearts have waxed hard, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes cannot see afar off. Have our ears become dull of hearing? Do we wonder at times if we are lost, have lost our vision or lost our way, and we don't even realize it? We met in a class a month ago, and it was about uh, preparing for the gathering of the nations. And the question was, what can we do to prepare uh, for this and prepare for Zion? And there were many different ideas that, talk, that were talked about, things we could do both uh, spiritual and uh, physical. But leaving there, as Marla and I were driving home, we talked about this, and we wondered how badly we really want this as a people. We go through the same motions month after month, year after year. Uh, we have classes and sermons and retreats and camps and so on. In the last 30 years, how much has really changed? We could, have, we could have great classes, great sermons, the best retreats, the best camps, the best storehouse, yet the food would rot on the shelf before Zion is established if we as a people don't do something completely different. Nothing will change if we continue to do things the same way we've been doing them. Maybe it's time we do something different. It's time uh, we leave today. It, it's time when we leave here today, we truly leave our sins at his feet. And you hear this about it almost not every sacrament service, but uh, about every one. Never, never to pick them up again. It seems that we come to the sacrament service repentant, which is great. <clears throat> but sometime later, later, maybe the next day or the next month, we return to that same sin. We come back to the, the next sacrament service repentant and, and again, later commit the same sins over and over again. We can't do, uh, we can't or don't want to really let them go. I think sometimes our sins are comfortable. They're old friends to us and we hate to ditch them. We also need to be asking God, what else is sin in our lives that needs to go? I know it's a scary thing to think about. It really is. And maybe we need to be, look at, at things that to us and the world around us 
aren't really considered sins in a traditional sense. We aren't supposed to be like the world. We're supposed to be a peculiar, peculiar people, or maybe a better word might be unusual. If you look up peculiar in the dictionary, um, it says weird as one of the definitions for people, but I don't think it really fits for what we're, we're after. But how does the world tell us apart from itself? 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Love not thy world, neither the things of the, that are of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all in the world that is a, of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is a, of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust is thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. It might be something that um, we're even overly passionate about or consumed by. It could be anything from our occupations to t-ball or to how we dress. But it, it's also uh, could be things like selfishness, self-centeredness, vanity, pride, or thinking uh, we have arrived. It may be things we don't even realize. If it's separating us from God or if we're making it more important than God, it is not good. Please don't misunderstand me. Uh, we all need to have jobs to support ourselves, and I believe it's good to have fun in life and with our families and to be passionate about things. Uh, <clears throat> but it's when we become totally consumed by it or what the world thinks is more important to us or we put it above God, it is not good. We can't have preparation classes for the rest of our lives and not be any closer to the Lord or closer to Zion than we are today. At some point, each and every one of us are going to have to make a real honest, make real honest changes in our lives and stop fooling ourselves. We are sometimes blind to what we really need to be. And this is my everlasting covenant, that when thy posterity shall embrace thy truth and look upward, that Zion shall look downward, and all heaven shall shake with gladness, and the earth shall tremble with joy, and the general general assembly of the church of the firstborn shall come down out of heaven and possess the earth and shall have place until the end come. And this is mine everlasting covenant, which I made with the Father Eni. <clears throat> and then in Dr. Covenant section 1, verse 3, Wherefore the voice of the Lord is unto the ends of the earth, that all that will hear, my, hear may hear. Prepare ye, prepare ye for that which is to come, for the Lord is nigh. And the anger of the Lord is kindled, and his sword is bathed, is bathed in heaven, and shall fall upon the inhabitants of the earth, and the arm of the Lord shall be revealed. And the day cometh that they who will not hear the voice of the Lord, neither the voice of thy servants, neither give heed to the words of the prophets and apostles, shall be cut off from the people, for they have strayed from mine ordinances. And they have broken mine everlasting covenant. They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness." But every man walketh in his own way, and after his own image of God, whose image is the likeness of the world, and those who, and the, whose substance is that of an idol, which waxeth old and perishes in Babylon, even Babylon the great which shall fall. We don't want to be like the world. We want to embrace the truth and look upward. In Doctrine and Covenants, section 45, it says, Even so I have sent mine everlasting covenant into the world to be a light, to the world, to the, beast, to the uh, standard for the people and for the Gentiles to seek it and to be a messenger before my face to prepare the way, uh, to prepare the way before me. I believe all of us at some time or another have fell in love with Jesus and he already loved us before that. But we sin, when we sin it's like we're cheating on him and we do it over and over and again. But he continues to call us back. He wants us back. He doesn't give up on us. He seeks each and every one of us out, wherever we may be, and lets us come back to him to be with him. When are we going to lose our hearts to him again, to completely give up ourselves to him? Like the story of Hosea and Gomer. Uh, Hosea was a prophet of God, and God told him to marry a wife that, and that did not have a very good reputation. Hosea loved this woman. And they weren't married very long, and she started running around on him. And she had children by other men. 
But he loved her enough that he still wanted her back. And she kept running around, and at some point in her life, it completely spiraled out of control, and she was sold into slavery. Now, Hosea loved her so much that he went and bought her out of slavery. I know this is a story about the God's re, uh, re, relationship with the children of Israel, but isn't what this, this what is happening to us here today? We're running off with others, but today, because he loves us so much, he's calling us back. He wants us to be close to him again. We are renewing our vows with him. In Romans uh, chapter 9, 38 and 39, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ our Lord. If we put on our driving glasses, and if we love him, you know he loves each and every one of us. And you guys realize that and know that, that he does love each and every one of you. But if we love him, what does he say to do? He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. C.S. Lewis said, if you read history, you will find that Christians who did the most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. And as since Christians have largely ceased to think of the, the other world, that they have become so ineffective in this. <clears throat> Do we want others to know the love of God? Like the children that are orphans, never knowing the love of a parent? Would we be the one that would we be the one to deny them the love of the Heavenly Father? Would we would we need to be making a difference in people's lives? And, and John 14, 15 says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And Doctrine and Covenants 59 says, Thou shalt love thy Lord with all thy heart, with all thy might, mind, and strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And there is no greater commandment than these two. This, that is to love God and love your neighbor. There is no greater commandment. The sons of Mosiah could not bear that any human soul perish. The very thought that any soul should endure endless torment caused them to quake and tremble. Are we like that? Are we like the sons of Mosiah? Alma 10, 27 through 30 says, And now, my brethren, I wish from the inmost part of my heart, yea, with great anxiety even unto pain, that ye would hearken unto my words, and ye would cast off your sins and not procrastinate the day of your repentance, but that ye would humble yourselves before the Lord and call on his holy name and watch and pray continually, that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear, and thus be led by the Holy Spirit, becoming humble and meek, Submissive, patient, full of love and long-suffering, having faith on the Lord, having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life, having the love of God always in your hearts, that ye may be lifted up the last day and enter into his rest. And, and may the Lord grant unto you repentance, that ye may not bring down his wrath upon you, that ye may not be bound by the chains of hell, that ye may not suffer the second death. I certainly don't want to leave anybody feeling like... Uh, it's hopeless because of the hopeless uh, the, because of the situation that we're in. We just have to do something different than what we've been doing. So I want to close with that same scripture that I started with in Revelation 21, and it says, "I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them." And be their God, and God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <clears throat>